Hello everybody and welcome back to Guided Hacking. This is Predish K and today we're going to be taking a look at malicious OneNote files. OneNote files have been in the news lately because they've been increasingly being used by all kinds of different actors from commodity to advanced persistent threats. Because of this rising threat, we should learn how to analyze them. You can see within this proof point diagram, the number of campaigns using OneNote in December was quite a small amount of campaigns, but in January, they've jumped up quite a bit. And we can see some of the malware families that are using OneNote files, such as AsyncRat, QuasarRat, Redline. And then at the bottom, we can see Qbot here, which is a very prominent and quite dangerous banking malware. I'm gonna take a look at a OneNote file that delivers AsyncRat. The theme of this OneNote file looks like this. It's got a fake subject at the top, and then it's got malicious trigger at the bottom that prompts the victim to double click and view the file. I've got the file on my desktop here. We can check out the strings and we see some references to some batch files. We also see the desktop of the threat actor that probably created this OneNote file. And we can see that they also had that batch file on their desktop. And scrolling through, there's not too much more that's quite interesting. Besides strings, how do we analyze this OneNote file? Well, we can start off with a great tool that's on GitHub here called OneNote Analyzer. And this tool will allow you to extract the attachment in a OneNote document, along with the attachment path, file name and size, some metadata, images, text, hyperlinks, and converts the OneNote document to an image. So I've already downloaded the tool and let's open this file.one to see what's inside it. Just need to run this command. And after that's ran, we can see all kinds of different information being shot out by OneNote Analyzer. It starts by saying that it's extracted a few files, these zoo1.bat, which we saw the strings of within Detector Easy. It also grabbed another one here and it's found that they, their path is from what we saw earlier, the Razor desktop. Scrolling down, we can see that it's got some page metadata with the title being remittance advice, the author being Razor, and the creation time being a few days ago and last modified time being a few days ago. It goes on to extract images from the OneNote document and it's extracted one image of the double click to view file and that's put it into the file content and then it's extracted some text and that's put it into a text document. It's also extracted some hyperlinks, but there doesn't seem to be too many hyperlinks within the file. So let's go and look at what it's grabbed. So looking at the directory of all of the files that it's extracted, we can see what the OneNote file looks like. We can see that at the top, it says evaluation only created with, I suppose note, this may be as we saw in that previous image, the title at the top left and that double click. And we can see that it's also found some of those file names just under that double click. So under the double click, we see those zoo1.bat. And I imagine that these are just a bunch of overlays under that image and it will just catch whatever click, no matter where you click on this button and then execute those batch files. Going through some more of the files, we can see the text within it. And that's just what we saw in the image. We can also see the image itself, the hyperlinks. There's only this as a hyperlink and the attachment. Now the attachment is what we're really interested in. Looking through these attachments, they all seem to be the same file. And I said previously that they were probably overlaid and put into the file multiple times so that no matter where you click on that button, it'll catch the click. So we only really need to analyze one of these. So I'm gonna take this and I'll stick it on my desktop and we can start analyzing it. So opening the file within Sublime Text to check out what's in this batch file, we see all kinds of jumbled up data and this data goes on for absolutely ages. At the top, we see what looks like a base64 encoded string because of that double equals padding at the end of it. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it into Cyberchef. So I've put the base64 data into Cyberchef and I'm going to run the from base64 on it. And it looks like a bunch of jumbled data. I don't see too many headers, but we can also just do the file on it and it will extract files from it and it's found zero files. So let's go back to the batch file. We see it starts echo off, then some PowerShell and a bunch more information, but really this is quite hard to read. So what's a quick way of deobfuscating batch files? Well, it's super easy. All you have to do is remove the echo at the top of the file, and then we can start by adding echo on each of these lines and it will echo out the command that it's about to execute. And now we can execute it. Some of you may be wondering, how do you learn malware analysis 
and how you can do the same as I do in these videos. Well, if you're prepared to put in the hard work and time, then I recommend that you go and check out the amazing content on the Guided Hacking website. There is an insane amount of technical content specifically regarding reverse engineering. So go check out Guided Hacking as your one-stop shop for all things reverse engineering output of the binary. So we can now simply just take that output and stick it into Sublime Text. And we can see that it first calls uh, executable and then does a bunch more does a bunch more interactions with powershell but the code doesn't look super clean and we can see that it does a replace at sign here so afterwards we actually get the clean output later on within the code so i went ahead and cleaned up the output a little bit and we can see that it first sets the variable of fd rqw to powershell and this is just pointing to the powershell executable and then if this PowerShell executable doesn't exist, then it'll set it to a different PowerShell instance. And once that's finished, it will then copy an executable and clear the screen. And below, we then see the big call to PowerShell. So I imagine that this PowerShell code here is going to be decrypting that base64 bytes that we saw at the start of the batch file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty it up and we'll take a look at what it does. So I've cleaned up the code quite a bit here and we can see at the start that it will take the at symbols and replace them with um, empty strings and that's because it was trying to obfuscate the code even more by inserting random at symbols within some of the strings. So it clears them up first. I've set the variable names to what their clear text string is and then we get into the first function here which is creating an AES class and then it's setting the mode to CVC saying the padding, the key, which is quite interesting, and the IV here, then creating a decryptor and transforming it into a decrypted string. Going on, we then see another function which will take a memory stream and then it will gun zip it. And again, just return that. And then lastly, we see a last function of system reflection assembly load. So it'll load some bytes and then go to the entry point of it and invoke it. And this is code execution here so reading through the main line of the code it'll read through the base64 string it'll then split it up and then it will use from base64 string it'll call the aes decryption on it and it will also gun zip it afterwards and set those into two different variables and then finally it will call the invoke into those two variables Thus, it will execute the malicious code that's stored within it. Quite a nifty way of getting around AV detection and executing the final binary. So looking at the encoded string that was found within the badge file, we can see the two payloads above. And then afterwards, this is the key here and this is the IV. So I'm going to quickly turn this all into a Cyberchef script and we can get the final payload. So putting that all together, we can see that we take the base64 of that string within the bad file and then we decrypt it with those two keys that were at the end of that string with the mode cbc and the inputs as raw and then after that's done we do gun zip and we get a executable out of it we can tell it's an executable it starts with the mz and we can also see this program cannot be run in dos mode so this file here because i've already analyzed it is async wrap and and that's it for this video i hope you took something away from this and until the next one Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.